Hey guys, welcome back to Explainer X today, I am going to recap a 1973 French anthology movie, Name Immoral Tales. So, let's begin. The first story occurs on the beach hence the name The Tide. Andre is a teenager who decides to take his 16-year-old cousin on a bike ride trip to the beach. When they get there, Andre tells his cousin that they should move to a more secluded area since this will allow them some privacy, and she can swim her heart out. The female cousin agrees and the two crawl among the rocks to get to the spot. Unfortunately, the two get stranded by the tide. Andre asks his cousin to quit swimming and put on her clothes while they wait for the tide to break. Andre is a little commanding, but the naive girl does not seem to let the commands affect her. The girl puts on her dress and Andre chides her for making it dirty despite being at the beach for a little while. After putting the dress on, Andre instructs her to remove her undergarments as they are the clothes she was swimming in. The poor girl removes her undergarments as Andre mentions that they should play a game to pass time. After a while, Andre asks his cousin what she knows about the tide formation. He goes on to explain about the moon and the sun and how each has to be well aligned for a tide to break. Andre looks at the naive girl and finally reveals his true intentions. He says that they never came to the beach to have fun. Moving to this rocky part of the ocean had been his plan all along as he has had a crush on his cousin for a while now. He tells the girl that he is thirsty and craves something. Instead of water, he craves his cousin's mouth as he wants her to satisfy him and make him feel good. He claims that the naive girl is a sheep, and she should lick the salt he is about to feed her. Wait, what? Andre continues to explain that the poor girl should concentrate on the task at hand so her mouth and brain should focus on pleasing him. That way, she can also attain pleasure from him. While speaking, Andre puts his finger into the girl's mouth. She is hesitant at first but as Andre continues his ministrations, she opens her mouth and begins suckling on the finger. Andre feels that he has manipulated the girl enough so to seal the deal, he asks the girl to go down on him and receive his manly gift. The poor girl is already turned on by the games that the two had played earlier, so she agrees. She starts fondling Andre, but he brushes her off remarking that there is no time to waste. He has a timer ready to perfectly match the tidal wave and his orgasm. He pushes the girl down and has her mouth servicing him. Soon, he gets animated and starts talking about the tide. Soon enough, the boy orgasms and matches it perfectly with the tide and the girl's own pleasure. The seagull's cry helps the two teenagers remember that they are not alone. Or does it serve to be the lulling melody to their aftermath? The second story happens in a church in 1980 and is called Therese Philosophy. A teenage girl living in the countryside has dedicated her life to the service of Christ in the church. One evening, she is walking in the church while contemplating on what she heard in the sermon. The Lord is asking her to be faithful and loyal to him. The words that the Lord is the master of her mind and soul plague her mind. She speaks out loud that she wants to be happy, and she hears the Lord tell her that he can make her happy. She only has to look, and he is there for him. However, her perverted mind shows her that the Lord can satisfy her in more than one way, and she begins touching the church relics fondly. In her mind, she believes that the Lord is her master, and he will reward her if she behaves right. How frustrating must it be to get sexually awakened in a church? Anyway, feelings overwhelm the poor girl, and she starts touching herself. She is soon found by an elderly woman, her supposed caretaker I guess. The woman chases and catches the girl. She calls her a liar and a sinner before taking her back to her room. She gives the girl a good whipping before leaving her hysterical and crying. She locks the sorry girl in the room and explains that she will be in isolation for three days and three nights. The poor girl starts crying and begs the woman to give her the religious materials she needs to keep her company. The woman agrees. The girl continues crying as she hugs the little old prayer book. For dinner, the poor girl is fed raw cucumbers. One day, she is alone in her quarters when she finds a book in her possessions. Since she is bored out of her mind, she starts reading the book only to find that it is an erotic one. After a while, the spirit comes to the girl, and she begins imagining being with her master again. She continues reading from the book while trying to keep her cool to no avail. Soon, she feels that she needs to quench her thirst and submit to these overwhelming feelings. In the next scenes, we see the girl touching the scanty religious relics in her room. When that is not enough, she kisses the little dolls she has in her room desperate to feel someone kissing her back. This heightens her mood and soon, she is lying in bed. She touches herself and remembers that she has some cucumbers. You know where this is headed. In the last scene of this episode, the girl is looking out the window trying to figure out what the next move might be. Far on the horizon, we see a man looking at the young virgin predatorily while figuring out how he will approach her and become her true master. The third story is set in the 1610s and is called Erzabet Batori. Erzabet is the Countess of Hungary. One day, she visits a tiny village in Hungary. 
The Countess orders all virgin, pure, or humble women to be brought before her. She starts examining them one after another and by examining, I mean looking at their lady bits. She also looks to see if they are beautiful. Before the Countess' arrival, one woman had left the village. She was having an affair with another man in the stables when the two were caught. She ran into the woods but she was captured. She is brought before the Countess alongside a little girl. The Countess looks at the women before her and approves. She, her maids, and the women then leave the village. The village women are taken into the Countess' palace. The women marvel at the beauty and splendor of the castle. However, they feel that the Countess could use a little cheering up. The Countess has her loyal aide show the village women the showers. The girls merrily shower while making jokes and drawing lewd sketches on the pristine walls. After a while, the girls are freshly showered and adorned in heaven-smelling perfumes. Their naked bodies are also glistening with fragrant oils. We see the Countess clean up the lewd sketch in the bathroom angrily while her aide prepares a drink. Meanwhile, the women are escorted out while still naked. They walk into a large hall where the Countess has them drink from what looks like a goblet of wine. The women become excited after the Countess agrees to let them touch her dress. The women clamor around her and start pushing the Countess until she falls on a nearby bed. They strip her naked, and one girl bites the necklace the Countess is wearing. She collects the pearls and inserts them into the Countess' vagina. Shortly, the women go crazy and start attacking one another. The Countess quickly exits the room. After a while, the naked Countess walks into the bathroom. The bathtub is filled with blood and her aide is cleaning her sword. The Countess bathes her body in the blood before rinsing it off with water. She has a woman come in, and she escorts her into her room and helps her dress. Soon, the two women start caressing each other and this leads to them having sex. The next morning, the aide stealthily gets up and leaves the Countess asleep. A few minutes later, Guards from the palace enter the countess' bedroom saying that she is under arrest by court orders. It appears that Orzabit murders young women and bathes in their blood to retain her youthfulness eternally. The final story happens in the church as well but in the 1400s. A pope is in the church with his son and daughter. He has his son kiss a nut before giving it to his daughter to eat. The pope and his family share a close relationship and not in the way you are expecting. After the church service is over, the pope leads his children into the pulpit. He shows them some lewd pictures of horses' dicks and asks them what their thoughts about that are. He explains that sometimes, man has to give in to his primal urges, and it is better to do so with someone you love. At this point, his daughter's suitor has joined them. The next scene shows the pope, his daughter, son, and son-in-law engaging in ritualistic group sex. Coincidentally, there is a priest doing mass. During sermon time, he starts explaining to the people what right and wrong meanwhile giving examples of when certain actions considered harmless turn into greater sins. He also renounces the Pope separating himself from the man's sinful actions. Suddenly, royal guards enter the church and drag the man away by orders of the king. The man is accused of blasphemy and burned to the stake. In the last episode, we see the Pope carrying his grandchild child outside for the congregation to see. It is the christening ceremony and the daughter is overwhelmed. I have to guess she has no idea who the father of the kid is. And the movie ends here.